Welcome to another episode of Roll or Die. Uh, today's guest is actually a request from someone else who we are very keen to have on the show. Lance, thanks for the Lance, uh, suggestion. Legend. We have the main man here. Uh, we're looking forward to getting to know him a bit. He's an expat from Australia, so a lot of the OGs around should know this guy. And for all of our other listeners, looking forward to getting to know him. He's a black belt who has kind of travel the world. At the moment, he's based in Bangkok. His name is Adam Shahir Kaum, and thanks for joining us, Adam. No worries, guys. Pleasure to be here. Awesome, brother. Yeah. So where are you right now? Where are you in the world? Uh, right now, I'm located in um, Bangkok, Thailand, mm -hmm. uh, near the Sukhumvit area, which is the CBD area in, in, in Bangkok. Nice man. And what's the what's the have you been training at this point? Like have you been you I don't know how long you've been back there because it like it sent you were just telling us before the show that you've been moving around a bit, but are you fully immersed back in the scene there? Yeah, trying trying to trying to get back into the groove here things in, in Bangkok. Um so officially uh I'm back in Bangkok. I've been back in Bangkok now. Let's see. Uh I say like a week now. Like it's official oh, wow. now that it's I'm back in Bangkok. <laughs> yeah, so it's fresh, oh, <laughs> hot out the oven. Oh, awesome. And you were telling us before the show too that you were previously the head coach at Evolve MMA in Singapore. So that's a pretty yes. big gym. That's a uh, pretty known for people on the scene. Um, mm -hmm. How long were you there? And then what brought you back been to in, Bangkok? Uh, before I came back to Bangkok, I'd say around two years. Yeah. Yeah, around two years. And uh, tell us about your time there in Singapore. Like, how was that? What, what's the scene Hectic. like over there? Hectic. No, nah, no. Nah. Um, yeah, listen, it was, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a job that I think that if, if you're passionate about, you know, you, uh, you don't really work, right? It's, a, it's, it's something that you do. And uh, yeah, for me, it's, 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 I don't switch off my brain. So like, I'm, always constantly thinking about positions, techniques, strategies, fights, you know, um, about the, about the, uh, about the athletes that I'm working with, uh, about the opponents. And, and then when I'm not thinking about that, I'm thinking about, um, jujitsu, mainly gi. I, I love gi. I'm a bit of a traditionalist that way, but, mm. uh, I love no gi. Right. But, um, I reckon you could do gi till you're 90 plus, you know, like My getting on the mat. Otherwise. My fingers say otherwise. Oh, yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you 100%. <laughs> I feel you 100%. So that's when you, that's when you start mixing up no gi grips in yeah. the gi situation. Yeah. Yes. yes. I'm learning that. Alas, too late. Yeah. I didn't do that in the early days, but yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just hold on a little longer. A little yeah. longer. And then and then like I shouldn't have held on that long. <laughs> right. Can I please have my finger back? I just need those two yes. fingers back. Yes. Yeah, Let me yes. reset that finger. Yep, yeah, we're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you taught jujitsu in uh, like three countries or something like that. Is that right? Four countries? Um uh I've taught jujitsu in back home, mm -hmm. Australia. Um taught jujitsu in Malaysia, Philippines, Korea, Japan, Brazil. Wow. Um, states. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. else, what else? Um, South Africa. Wow. Um, My husband's South African. That's fantastic. Mm. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. But we, yeah. I don't care what they say. We still make better bobbies. <laughs> <laughs> There's Every very country. Long. Every country. Have, they've got the a duck. Thing with Brazilian Get ready. Bobbies. They're going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you know, like, I was really surprised. Long. Though, they in, go for like in, three, in four Cape hours. Town. Like, give me the food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But in Cape Town, I felt like there were parts in Cape Town that were like identical to Sydney and Melbourne. Just yes. Uh, yes. silver engineering. It was, it was a bit bizarre. Yeah. 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 100%, 100%. I just want to go back to my question here, right? Because you've taught. I didn't do it, but yep. 
No, you've done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. You did tell reflex, us. Reflex, that... sorry. Yeah, your reflex from growing up as a what did you say? You were when you grew uh, up number five in the seven family. Wow. So you cop the blame mm. for a lot of things. <laughs> was that all boys? And funny enough, say? the youngest is the best at getting away with everything because he just saw six of us in a row going, Yeah, nah, I'm not gonna do that, those mistakes. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, he learned from your mistakes. Interesting. And Adam, just going back as well, you were saying you prefer the gi, but you actually have pretty um, a history of MMA. Like you're you're a very accomplished MMA fighter as well. So a lot of the time, people doing MMA lucky, don't, lucky. don't train in the gi. You, lucky, lucky, lucky. What are you? What are your thoughts around that? Like people that do MMA that you know they don't really believe in the gi, but you disagree. Um, I wouldn't say. I, I wouldn't say to strongly disagree i just think you miss out on on a lot do you know what i mean mm. and then here, here's my stance on it right name me one adcc champ that isn't very good in a game mm. yeah silence that's why i said this oh yeah right because it is a part of the foundation and, and um you, you you generally hear people like uh oh, Another one is that it's not street worthy, right? Like I've never, like I, I used to work as a doorman. Mind you, I wasn't the biggest doorman, but um, it's always handy to have big fellows with you. But I've never, not once, right, had to deal with a confrontation where the bloke just walked up to me with spats and a rash guard. I mean, if someone walks up to you in the street with spats and a rash guard, you should be intelligent enough to yeah, figure out, right. yeah, no, nah, that's not a good idea. <laughs> and make space. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, but you know, the, 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 the toughs that I've got, yeah. the, the toughs that I've gone into, right? Like, the blokes always want a jacket or a shirt, or even on the beach, right? Hmm. Like, you can, not that I'm advocating that you should go out and do this, but you can still choke someone with a singlet. Yeah. You can still choke someone with your own gear. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Do you know? Oh, yes. Like, mate, like, I had guys coming up going, I'm about to stab you. Take off my jacket. What? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Make distance. Yeah. So, like, like yeah. you, it's, it's, it's beneficial. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And plus, I don't know, I don't know um, how long you've been in the game, Anton, but I remember when doing Nogi was more like back in the days where we were doing Valley Tudo, right? Wow. And I'm telling you, there's nothing like the experience of having a big, sweaty Brazilian who's rugged up, right? And all he's got is Speedos on. I mean, oh, yeah. like just yeah. <laughs> the sweat and the hair follicles, you know, like. <laughs> No, absolutely fun. and yeah. you always have that you absolutely. always have that you always have that training partner oh yeah i forgot to bring my rashi and then you're like yeah but oh. you got a carpet for a front chest so like <laughs> yeah. how about you just don the gi and we go sambo for a bit you know like yeah it's a protective layer isn't it it's a protective layer 100 you know yeah. lincoln hancock your coach kim said that he yeah. thinks that the whole gay no gay debate is getting boring but i i believe that adam has Taking the boring, taking the boring side of this debate here today. That's for sure. Yes. There's a deal. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny, man. You're a funny guy. So yeah. I would love to know, um, like going back to my question from before, you've taught jujitsu in all of these places and yep. other things as well. Is from a cultural perspective, are there things that like have you have you just made assumptions and then it's really backfired or do, is is teaching jujitsu the same wherever you go? Like, is this a global language, like the language of love, or is, is it something else? It's the language of pain. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, there's a lot of factors that are involved, especially because it's 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 from my personal experience, right? So I grew up in a very multicultural household, right? I mean, my dad's my dad's uh, background. So uh, Afghan, Pakistani, Malay, right? And then mom, right? Um, mom's redhead, green eyed, white, right? Australian, Australian, Irish, Scottish, hmm. right? So, I mean, 
Yeah, listen, uh, Ramadan and Christmas were always interesting, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, and then to boot, to boot, my 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 grandmother's side was Catholic, and my grandfather's side was uh, Pro Protestant, right? Mm. So, um, I think I grew up with a sense of cultural sensitivity. So, I think when I when I when I'd get into a room, I could read it quite well. Yeah. Right. And um, but. Uh, I always think like, don't ever assume, right? So like, you never go like in like like growing up in Sydney, right? You never go up to Greek and go, yeah, I like five beers, thank you, because <laughs> that is like up yours, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd be going, because you see like you see them go nah, and then they would say the following words, which mm -hmm. I'm not gonna repeat, right? <laughs> but you know, so like little things like that. I just got taught also. Um, don't assume, do your homework, and always ask, right? Mm -hmm. Because like sometimes in, in, in some particular cultures, you get, it, it's it's labeled like silly to ask, right? But I reckon it's even sillier when you make a mistake that yeah. all, it, it could have been, it could have been prevented just by simply asking and asking respectfully. That's mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. And actually know? taking that to jujitsu, I noticed that in clubs where, people encouraged to ask a lot of questions seems to be like those clubs that do quite well. Like they you should be at a club. I always say, I always say the, the most dumbest question in class, provided that you're not asking me what's the price of tea in China right now. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's jujitsu related. The dumbest question was the one that didn't get asked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a caveat, right? Cause, cause you, you, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, if you're an instructor, your time management, right, and also a flow of attention, right. So you you, you have to be um, you have to be uh, an educator and an entertainer, mm. right? Because you can be like completely brilliant, right? But if you're as you know, if you're as dry as paper, it's like yeah, it's right. So true. So. Do you know, and you gotta understand, like when 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 people are paying you for your time, right? You have a responsibility to to make that experience forty five minutes to an hour to an half an hour. That's on you, on mm -hmm. how you coordinate the class, on how you conduct the class, how you engage with the class. You know how you how you try to to make sure that also on top of that that. Not only you're providing a, cha uh, a, a challenging educational environment, that is also a safe space, right? Mm -hmm. So you also have to be aware on how you manage roles. Like, uh, well, don't set Johnny who 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 plays for for the Rabbitohs with, you know, like um, uh, Auntie Auntie Michelle Wong who who runs a grocery store. Like, you just mm -hmm. you know, you got to be intelligent on on that coordination as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. You know, uh, I I think it's it, it's important that you you have that that sense of sensitivity, right? And also education. It, it depends on your environment and also other factors. Like, did you have a good instructor that was not just only interested in making you a really good uh, competitor, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. uh, a, 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 a jujitsu representative that's able to help pass on. No, like pass on the knowledge. I'm not being a, uh, a smarty pants when I'm saying it, but you know, like you're not just passing on knowledge on technique, you're also passing on um, gym culture, which is mm -hmm. super important, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that, um, yeah, like you just make sure that it's it's safe, it's safe enough to feel comfortable, but challenging enough to where it's progressive. Mm. Yeah. For sure. For I, sure. I love that, man. Like I was driving in the car with my daughter the other day and she and I was, and I off the cuff said, there's no stupid questions. And she said, that is bullshit. There are stupid questions. <laughs> and I thought and I it took, it took timing, me, timing, thought, timing. There are timing and location. Yeah, that's right. So th that is one of the things I would like to say, because or I would like to explore with you guys is like what would be a good way for students to like, as Kim said, the best environments are where the students are asking questions what would be encouraged, what, yeah what, yeah so it should be encouraged but what's it how do you ask how how do the best students ask the best questions that's my question for you guys you got anything any thoughts on that how 
how do the students ask the how do how do I, the best students was yeah, that well, it? How, how do students how do this what can we see about the students who do progress well like what kind of questions do they ask for example because i like i know i've asked some really dumb questions and probably because i'm trying to like impress my coach or make it clear to some, i don't know what the hell i'm doing sometimes when i was in my earlier belts but i'm wondering like do you guys have any views over time we've seen so many people coming through the ranks in jiu-jitsu what's yeah. how do you ask a good question in a class full of jiu-jitsu people so as not to derail the class and make it a better class any idea yeah so that's on the that's on the coach right um and listen when i say that's on the coach it's not a guilt trip right as i'm saying that um <laughs> well maybe the coach didn't have the opportunity to experience like really good teachers and i've 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 um, wow, I actually think about why wow, I am getting old. Um, uh, <laughs> we all are, bro. You're in good company. The, 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 He's still the, younger the, than us, Adam. Don't worry. Ah, uh, sweet. <laughs> Anton's master's five now, and I'm yeah. I'm nearly there too. So yeah, I'm master's yeah. four. Oh, yeah, same, same, baby. Same. You want yeah. me to change your nappy? Just let you know. Let me know, brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've I've had the experience where I've I've been with um coaches that um are remarkable teachers maybe not the best uh competitors for whatever reason and um coach uh coaches that have like um like a, a mountain of 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 experience with competing being world champions right and i walked out of that walked out of that that set that training session or class or get together or role and I'm thinking, what happened, right? Like, on top of that, like you, with with being the instructor, like I, I understand that dilemma. Like, you want to, like, if if you really love jujitsu, right, or love anything that you do, and you're and you're partaking in the experience of teaching, it's tough, eh? Like, I'm not saying it's it's an it's 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 easy right it can be challenging especially when you have to manage time right when you're teaching you want to give enough space for uh questions right but you also have to make sure that the that the student is there when they're watching you and listening to you teach that they're also digesting what you're trying to show right so that's 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 the gambit right you're, you're, you're trying to do that balancing act mm. right and uh professor libra over here terrible <laughs> right because i'm always critiquing is that enough was that good enough do you know uh <laughs> did i do it well enough uh, did he get it why is he asking so many questions this guy's really frustrating ah i'm getting distracted i gotta deal with the rest of the group so <laughs> you also have to recognize what group you're dealing with is it with the advanced guys right mm. If it's with the advanced guys, you know, they can't get too butt hurt when you're like, mate, you really didn't get it. You know, like when you're throwing jokes around. But with yeah. beginners, you cannot let them feel that they get like with beginners, you have to be extra sensitive because they're already walking in with this backdrop of um of doubt, right? Yeah. I mean, beginners, like you gotta understand, like if if you're like if you're like us that like, eh, I'll have a crack at it. And they go, oh, I quite like this. Even the guy's like, what, 110 kilos. And he just sat on me from Mount for, you know, 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm that stubborn person. I like, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get you. And I'm going to figure out how to do it better. And then that kind of washes away. And they're like, hey, Bill. Come on, let's roll. And then, you know, and then it progresses yeah. from there. And the next thing you know, 30 years, you've been in the game. You're like, oh, wow. But the thing is, is that beginners will automatically, because they're already walking in with a whole bunch of doubt, right? And you got to think about the courage that you walk in, especially during in the 80s, 90s, right? We were lunatics, right? Doing jujitsu. And you have, and you have someone that pops their head in and goes, oh, this looks interesting. And then you see blokes flying across the mat and guys putting <laughs> kimuras to the back of the head. Do you know? And you're like, yeah, um, thanks. I was, I was just looking for a, a, a fitness gym. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so you always got to deal with that, right? 
So they they will be so easy to disqualify themselves at the drop of a hat, especially when you're using vocab that they have no idea about. Yeah. Do you know? Like yeah. on today, fellas, we're doing the Kimura. And then and this is what it is. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like um, I'll tell you a really funny experience. One one day, uh it was it was the beginners class, and uh one of these one of, one of these white belts walked up and goes, Coach, coach, um, can you show me the kimura with the legs? Right? And I'm thinking, yeah, see, exactly, yeah. exactly, right? And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, sure. Um, I'll just show it to you after class. <laughs> and I was perplexed. I'm going, and I'm thinking, I have seen nearly everything under the sun. What the hell is the kimura with the legs? <laughs> so, so you know, he, he forgot it. He forgot about it at the end of the class. Right. And I'm there and I'm and I'm thinking and I'm because my wife's a, 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 she's about to get a second degree in, in jiu-jitsu. So she's a black belt as well. Right. Yeah. And I'm thinking, Jim, come over here. And I'm trying to think how to do this really complex maneuver with my feet on how to imitate the kimura. <laughs> right. And she's looking at me like, um, why don't you just ask him? <laughs> and I'm like, my ego just couldn't take it. Anymore. <laughs> no, I was up on the computer looking up, and I typed in Kimura with legs. You know what it was? What was it? The Omoplata. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the perspective that he that. saw yes. it, the perspective that he saw it was essentially what a, yeah. a shoulder lock. Wow. It is. Yeah. But it's an entanglement with the legs. Wow. Yes. Right? Yeah. So and I and I grabbed him and I was like, "Kate, hey, wow. show me what this bloody kimura is with the legs, <laughs> no, with the feet." Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he was like, "Oh, it's like this." And I was like, "You know when you do one of these ones?" But I, it, I got into this self-abusive state. <laughs> All you had to do was just ask. Can you just explain to me what you're what you're talking about? But, oh, yeah. mate, I couldn't handle it, eh? Oh, so I was like, We've so, only got a bit over seven minutes, Adam, but can you give us, um, we always ask this of all, I guess, how you how you discovered jiu-jitsu, how you got started? You've got a pretty extensive martial arts background. Like, what brought you to jiu-jitsu? Um, oh, it sounds like pretty negative when I think about it. So I, I got into a bit of a biff outside on um, New South Head Road specifically in front of the uh the sheaf hotel hmm. and um so what happened was i i was always something stupid you know when you're young and um so i, I wouldn't back down right and um i thought taekwondo champ kyokushin trains judo i, I got this right so the guy grabbed me and I went and did um I went and did uh Ogoshi, right? Bam! And I threw him down. But then we rolled. So in my head, I'm like, Ippon, sweet, I'm gonna get the Osai Komi, but I rolled, right? I overcommitted on the throw. And then the guy, the guy, I had him in like the standage headlock, right? Because I was panicking. I was like, oh what what happened there? And then the guy mounted me, right? And then the guy mounted me, and the uh, and then an, another bloke came up, and he had his he had his boot to my face. Wow! Right? And I was just like, "Oh, this is not good." And I wrapped, I wrapped, I wrapped the guy's head, and um, it sounds violent, but I was, <laughs> you gotta understand, I was panicking, right? Yeah. So I got him in a headlock, and I stuck my thumb in. Uh, I reached around and I fish hooked him, right? Yeah. And I was using my, I was using the bloke's head, not as a shield not to get stomped on wow. and then my late brother comes in and picks up the guy pulls him off and then it was like all right you know wow. let's just make our way home now right and i was i was I, I couldn't sleep that night you know i think i was around 18 19 i was like all of that just what mm. right and i think i was like a blue belt in judo at the time so i, I couldn't sleep and i had this constant nag right I had this constant nag, like, it, you know, like, what do I need to never feel like that again? Hmm. I know 30 years down the line was 
swallow your ego and then it, everything would have been all right but <laughs> what happened was <laughs> what happened was so i went back to i went back home uh, to my other home right to malaysia during uh during chrissy and back then it was all uh like videotapes right so we went down to the local uh night bazaar where they had like where they all they all had like copied videotapes you know like original copies you know of the latest movies you can and i was uh looking through the the video cassette and um so i this image of an red octagon in a gladiator with a red skirt golden belt doing this i was like oh this looks interesting and i flipped it over and it was that um it was i had that picture of that guy i think his name scott morris the ninja guy it was in ufc 2 mm -hmm. and he fought that guy pat smith and you know like broken orbital fractured cheekbone nose across here blood running down his face and i'm thinking what is this <laughs> <clears throat> go home put it on the videotape and i just went yes this is what i have to learn you know, but the striker in me, where I was like, there's got to be a way to beat this. I mean, there's this South American bloke in, in, in a gi, like, what, 90, 80, 80 plus kilos, and he's just wiping the floor with everyone, right? So then when I get back, when I get back to Sydney, uh, I'm going through every club going, do you teach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Do you teach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Do you teach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? I was, oh, we teach Jiu-Jitsu. I said, no, it's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, <laughs> right? So, um, and by pure luck, I had given up looking for Jiu-Jitsu at the time. I think this was like 1994. Wow. 94? No, 93, 93, 94, right. So, Went into um, went and started Aikido, Yoshingan Aikido, with uh, an instructor by the name of Aga Manhao. and he was teaching in a uh, martial arts boxing gym. Uh, back in the day, I I think the gym was called City City Boxing Boxing Works Boxing Works, mm -hmm. and it was on. I can't remember not. Castle Ray Street. I think it was on Elizabeth Street in the city. Mm. Yeah. And then I walk in and then I'm just about to walk in. The, I've come early for the class, right? That's the only thing I ever used to really turn up early for. Uni, homework, events. Nah. <laughs> but training. Yeah. On point. But, um, oh, and my birthday. My mom said that was the only thing I was ever on time or early for. <laughs> <laughs> I will note you showed up late for this podcast as well, yes, bro. Yes, so that's true. But I'm a man of my word when it comes you... to business <laughs> and, and jiu-jitsu. That's right. And class, man. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then... think, no, I was on I was on time when I had to register my marriage. So, yeah, I was on time for that. <laughs> and my daughter's birth. And my daughter's birthday. Anyway, so... um. Uh, yeah, so I walked in and there were these guys rolling around and I was thinking, ah, good fortune has blessed me. Wow. And then, uh, so just as the guys were coming off the mat, I said, oh, is, is, are you guys doing jujitsu? I said, yeah, but we're, um, we're fighters from Pankras, hybrid wrestling, right? So it was guys like, uh, uh, Uncle Larry, Larry Papadopoulos, and then uh, Alex Cook, and then um, uh, Krista Weaver, and then there was another guy there. Um, anyway, so, and then it just happened from there. Then um, Krista Weaver uh, started his own club, and we started from there. Krista Weaver then introduced us to Peter the Bean. And then Peter Bean introduced introduced us to uh, Carlos Gracie, uh, uh, Gordo, uh, Mastro Feitosa, uh, and then after that, because um, we were in Sydney, right? And um, Peter Bean's from from Victoria, from 
Torquay and Melbourne. Torquay, that's right. Yeah. Beach, He's Torquay. my first coach. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I used to ask Pete a lot of questions when I was in, whenever I was in Melbourne, mm. right? Oh, and that's Torquay. how you know Lance? No, uh, I, I, I knew Lance from Peter Beam, but uh, our relationship grew from him breaking my arm in competition. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a nice bonding, yeah? That's how you, you get to know. Yeah. There's nothing like that kind of bonding ever yeah. in the whole world that you can say, mate, you know, I love you, but not for breaking my arm. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> and so did, did I read, Adam, that you used to then travel back to Brazil to learn more jiu-jitsu in the early days? Yeah. 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 That was the only way, right? It was either that. Or those crappy copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of the the Gracie Jiu Jitsu videotapes. Yeah. 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 People these days so, don't don't understand that because anything, you know, they've got BJJ Fanatics, they've got YouTube, they've got everything at their fingertips. Yeah? yeah. When you started, you had to go back to the source to get yeah. your and this is just this is just my take of why I think us Australian Jiu Jitsu competitors. Right. Uh, 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 even though we're uh, considered, considered uh, to the rest of the world, like especially the pool of athletes that you have in, 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 in America. Right. And in Brazil is that we we I mean, also just our sporting nature, but we didn't have the privilege of so many good athletes to 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 watch and learn from and and coaches to 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 learn under is that we kind of had to figure it out not ourselves but you know trial and error and then whatever that we could right i mean like the the way that i look at it is that uh the original jiu-jitsu athletes in australia and and coaches we like we'd suck the marrow out of the bone mm -hmm. so to speak you know mm -hmm. like so mm -hmm. We, we we had to make do with what we got and then when when uh whenever i went to brazil i always used to hear um other brazilian athletes going man you australians are uh, a like tough and b um you guys are, are good athletes and uh really to really willing to get put through the meat grinder to learn you yeah. know so i remember i used to go to brazil and they used to think i was a bit of a nut you know they always used to make fun of me right mm -hmm. brazilian way right uh also a bit, bit of a background my auntie uh old time family friend um my godmother she's from salvador brazil oh wow but um uh grew up in curitiba so um the I used to go off class and write notes, sweat dripping, trying to make sure that the pen doesn't blot when you're writing down and the yeah. ink spreading all over the paper. And then you know, I used to, you know, I used to crack the shits because I'm thinking, ah, now I'm drawing holes. And I'm just borrowing into my notebook. And then I used to have a video cassette and uh, recorder that I also used to uh, use as um, a tool to help me learn Portuguese. Right. Wow. So uh, I'll go off to imagine you know, save my little thing in the tape recorder and then go back home and then write notes. So, uh, yeah. yeah. But also, I always used to think as um, learning martial arts wasn't just learning about the technique. Um, Yuki and Akai put it pretty, put it in a pretty cool way. Uh, martial, martial communication because mm. the benefit of going to another country, not just being shit scared, but uh, going to another country, you're learning another language, you're meeting new people, your your social environment's different, you're learning a new language, you know? So there's all these benefits to education, you know? Mm. So martial, martial communication and martial education. Man, you know that mean? is that's probably... It. And that's, that's the beauty about martial that's arts, that's right? Because yeah. well, the, when, when, you, when you look at martial arts, right, it's, it's hard and soft, right? Martial being military, arts, right? Being fine or expressive, Right, <laughs> you don't really have a chance to get on the back. I'm going to express myself. No, but martial arts it, it teaches you, it tries to teach you, or I try to learn from it that you're you're learning the hard and the soft, right? I mean, like in 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 karate, yeah, goju, like goju ryu, right? Hard and soft, right? Mm -hmm. So there's there's a lot like the languages, the arts, the culture, and then you got the martial, right? 
the discipline, the hardship, the, the physical exertion, and all that kind of stuff. Mm. You know, because when I was learning with um, back in the day in Carlson Gracie, uh, a lot of our instructors had a judo background, so they ran their jujitsu classes very similar to judo. So like uh, Zamario, um, Mario Sperry in 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 Porto Alegre, uh, Fernando Yamazaki, who's you know like you know who Fernando Yamazaki is, right? Anyone who's done jujitsu or judo in Brazil. Um, so. And my instructor, my instructor in 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 Malaysia, he was one of the first Malaysians to train under um, Isawa Nokuma and Nobuyuki Sato Sensei in Japan. He was a he he was a, a exchange student. So um, you know, like I've I'm I've always loved judo, and my mates, you know, in Malaysia and in Australia had had a judo and jujitsu background. You know, I think I like uh, Morgan, Morgan Davies uh, in Sydney. He used to come and train with us. And then I used to train at Sydney University. A uh, good buddy of mine, Alex Chu, uh, used to compete in judo for New South Wales. So I was always brought up with judo and jiu-jitsu side by side. Amazing, brother. You know, I was before we were thinking about naming this, but I was. I was thinking about naming this podcast "How to Do a Kimura with the Feet," but I think oh, that would be brilliant. The best name for the episode and the best way to end this episode this episode is with martial communication. The best way to name it, you know, I think yeah. Kim and I are in agreement there. Agree. Okay. Oh yeah. Thank yeah. So, so any any final words, Adam? Any uh, words of wisdom for our listeners to to wrap it up? We're nearly out of time. Just a couple of minutes. Um. I suppose, like, if, if someone who's just starting their jiu-jitsu journey, right, uh, the best advice that I can give is um, never assume how a class starts, right? Always always just make that little extra effort to ask, right? Don't assume. Because that kind of, uh, that kind of, um, that kind of uh, act shows respect by itself, right? That, that, that shows a lot. And... If an instructor can see that and appreciate it, mate, you you'll automatically be one of his favorite students, right? And with the instructors that get frustrated sometimes, especially if they if they are uh, starting out in the jujitsu journey, as as a jujitsu instructor, uh, patience and compassion, right? Mm -hmm. Because we were them back in the day, right? And just a little bit of compassion. And a little bit of patience will pay off dividends, you know. So that's that's all I would like to impart. Thank you, know you so I mean? much, brother. Really appreciate no that. No worries, man. Awesome episode. No worries, awesome. guys. Thank you for having me on. And to last I know, you know, he's he's a legend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he's a legend so much so. So that one straightens. <laughs> Girl Lance's fault. All right. Well, well nah, listen, all love. All I love. have to have a listen out because he said, I've been asking for a little bit to get him on. A few people have asked to get him on this show. And his answer to me was, he will only come on if you do. Oh, so now that you've been God. on, Lance, you've been oh, called out. You need to uh, come on as our guest. So keep a listen out for him. Uh, are you going to yeah. be coming back to Australia anytime, Adam? Or do you um, hopefully, hopefully I'll, I'll uh, get to come back. I was actually... My wife and I were were kind of in the process of of looking to come back to um to come back home to to either S Sydney or Melbourne, and I was just talking to Lance about it, and also I was talking to um uh, Liam Resnikov, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, right now in regards to moving, I think it'll be uh, maybe in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. but um for for visits yeah i reckon i reckon we'll be back home in around july or if not latest by just before chrissy awesome Fantastic. awesome well, hopefully we you. will catch you mm -hmm. uh look forward to to that and uh yeah we'll have this episode out in a couple of weeks if you could share it on yeah. your social media we would love that and oh, for uh, sure. thank you once again and uh peace peace out. Out. Catch you later. Peace out, guys thank you. Right. thank you thank you thank you